first is the aging model. So, so I, uh, I study aging as uh, well is one of my research topics. So, uh, my hypothesis aging is the emerging the property uh, of biological system. So, emerging property basically means, for example, you see water, water is a water molecule. Uh, or air molecule, but then you see the lots of turbulence. If you put all the water there, all of a sudden there's a turbulence, but you don't see the turbulence caused by a single molecule of water. Right? So what as uh, what water the molecule doesn't have the property of a turbulence. But the turbulence is the property of the water as a whole. So turbulence can be considered as a property of the uh, Many, many molecules. Right. There's also another uh, emerging property is the color. Color is the interaction of atom in a molecule, but you don't say each atom has a color. But because the interaction of atom in a molecule is a look light at one frequency, emit light at different frequency, and then each molecule can have a kind of a color when we see it. So there's one argument to say color is the emergent property. What I argue the aging of the emergent property is uh, like, for example, you have a cell, each cell has a molecule. Each cell will age, but each molecule, if you, does each molecule age, but if that does each, uh, 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 Chemical also age, is that really aging? What is aging? So the definition of biological aging or aging is the, the chance of dying has to increase over time. But if the chance of dying doesn't increase over time, it's a non-aging system. The non-aging system will be what? Exponential decay, basically, basically the radioactive uh, uh, isotope or chemicals like hydrogen peroxide. Right? You, if you go to a drugstore, you, you see uh, peroxide. The primary decay of hydrogen peroxide is exponential. Exponential, if you take the derivative of exponential curve was time that a constant, which means the chance of the decay is constant over time. <clears throat> so this Exponential decay is a non-aging character. The, the idea is if we use a non-aging uh, component to build a cell, every, every protein interaction is non-aging, but in the end, the whole system is aging. So actually, it's put a mathematical model to do that. Uh, let me see. <coughs> okay. So, I can put that uh, on the archive uh, many years ago. Uh, to give a model of that. So, uh, that's, yeah. so <clears throat> that is, I finally have this definition of a network aging. Sorry, that looks very So, network aging model. So, this is actually the rate of aging, and it's defined by the number of uh, genes in a cell number of gene interactions, uh, a cell and the decay rate of every uh, gene interact component. So I, I have this model for a while and then publish, uh, and then I uh, asked to write a review of it. Uh, the reviewer made a many come about me to re revise this and generate new plot. But my old plot are all in archive. Uh, that looks pretty. So. What I did, I just uh, <clears throat> put this paper in ChatGPT, uh, take a screenshot of the formula, formula my formula, and ask ChatGPT to use Python to redo the plot. <laughs> Our code tab, I guess how. <coughs> Let me see. Uh, it's very impressive. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, I'm really glad that the that really can do that.
Yeah. <coughs> you first, uh, so <coughs> you first generate the single plot. I'm going to uh, ask to change the parameter. <coughs> and this is the, the new plot I put in the slides. Yeah. <laughs> this is general attack and this is also kind of a <clears throat> modified based on TGPD diagram. So this is <clears throat> revised uh, figure in my uh, review paper. <clears throat> but then I also generate a model with the <clears throat> then I treat I, I realize the potential of this how easy this can be done I I generate even more <clears throat> bigger to explore how the model expand the parameters. <clears throat> I think this one, it doesn't look like I say my prompt there. The prompt is basically <coughs> ask GBT to <coughs> go over the uh, the N, which is number of essential genes, N is the number of uh, interactive genes. And then <clears throat> there's a probability of the stochastic uh, gene interactive probability, uh, also a constant decay rate. <clears throat> All those comments are also added by ChatGPT. And then <clears throat> it shows how the my uh, model the rate of aging and the initial mortality really change based on my model with respect to those parameters. It's very impressive, but uh, I used to spend the days uh, you run R and MATLAB to do the kind of plot. But this is just done in a few minutes with the uh, technology. Mm -hmm. so, and then I, uh, this is version two. Uh, I don't like, I don't like this large space it has no change so the, the range is not a problem so i asked me to look for the range which is biologically re relevant right so it's a lot of the things the chatgb has done is out of the range for biological age so i, I asked it to revise in the biological relevant range uh, but it's, Yes, it didn't work well, but it actually did go to the biological range in the end by uh, resampling. Uh, it actually also helped. Yeah, so now you actually can see the biological range is really a small part of the parameter space. Uh, <clears throat> it, and then I asked it to do pairwise plot. Uh, uh, it's now you see the range. <clears throat> so biological relevant range is really just a small part of it. And my looking, I got a lot of very interesting plot. <clears throat> so this is uh, essential genes, number number of interaction per gene. Uh, and this is label cut off. So. That's the probability of gene interaction. And then you like to plot its contour to show how, <clears throat> how the model predicts the age for the constant mortality. And then the, <clears throat> this one is not do well. I think I re rewrite this. Again, this so, so interactive tell the ChatGPT to tell <clears throat> adjusted parameter initial plot uh, to see the 
stochastic P with the N, this seems to be out of our range. I, I did say the problem in the Python code itself. <clears throat> but the next one is actually adjusting. So it's not linear, but it certainly is a negative correlation. So you, <clears throat> uh, this is supposed to be due by May 26, Friday. I think I have good reason to request that extension. <laughs> so it's not busy with the IE. <clears throat> so this is, uh, this is this kind of simulation I used to spend weeks, if not months, to till the parameter uh, for the manuscript revision. And but this, but this I think I spent less than thirty minutes. Of course, uh, I have a lot of building knowledge, prior knowledge on that. But for the actual Python plotting, the, the work I used to spend weeks to do is not just uh, <laughs> quite quite efficient with that. It's not much faster. <clears throat> yeah. So. Uh, by the way, <clears throat> what's very impressive is uh, for the mathematical formula, I didn't type it in myself. I just take the screenshot. It generates a function, I verify it. Right? And of course, I compare my previous uh, R code. To the result is exactly the same. But that is very impressive. <laughs> Consider, uh, I didn't even type in the formula myself. I just did the screenshot. Yeah. And that's the screenshot I get. I just took the screenshot. <clears throat> Very interesting. Uh, oh, by the way, the back in uh, when is the TPD follow release? It's actually called the Echo. The TPD follow is a very recent release. So just a few months ago, I could not do this. I had to. The previous year, when I tried to input formula, guess what I do? I have to type in latex. I have to use latex to type in the formula, make sure it's correct, and then ChatGPT to understand what formula I ask it to do. But now with GPT 4.0, I don't even have to do latex anymore. Just take the screenshot. <clears throat> so, the, the interaction is certainly much more uh, faster now. <clears throat> the, and things really changed quite a bit. <laughs> so, uh, <clears throat> um, if you think about now you want to use the math calculus your focus is really should focus on the idea, how to use math uh, programming to express your idea. The actual math itself is not this. Uh, you, once you have an idea what do you want to model, and you can write in symbols and the letter specifically take care of the actual math. You can write implement the highest on math like you have to ask it to do that. So the actual math formula is just expressed of your own idea. <clears throat> is it? This may not. Uh, if you think about the, you have all the physics, chemistry, all this math formula, they have just kind of a hypothesis or idea we try to describe the, the real world of your so, <clears throat> This is the, the formula I showed. It's just my hypothesis. Actually, it's oversimplified, not even close to express the real world. <laughs> Simple enough to make some point. <clears throat> okay. Is the I is it said to be back? Oh, it's back. Okay, so now I can show you how I did it. Uh, it's right here. <clears throat> Uh, 
Explain the math formula on the reliability model. This is the reliability model. Oh, boy, it does give them the formula right here. <clears throat> and you'd like to explain. By the way, oh, wait, wait, wait. This is actually just ChatGPT form. I didn't even use for This is just the ChatGPT form. Uh, <clears throat> so we'd like to explain it. And then, uh, I, I tried to verify this model, but apparently this is correct. <clears throat> so there I put a screenshot, I tried to copy paste. Copy paste doesn't really work. But screenshot seem to work. <clears throat> I, I say here do a plot for the mortality of the liver and <clears throat> what? Okay. Uh, so this is not a figure I want, but apparently if we want to use ChatGPT, there's a technique something called chain of thought. Right? So if you talk to a child and talk to someone that doesn't know something, you want to start with the whole picture, you start with something simple. ChatGPT is just like another child. So if you want to ask ChatGPT to do some very complicated task, you to break it down to steps. <clears throat> First, start with a simple one. Then two, three. You, you have some. I think technically they call it chain of thought. So you can use this to guide ChatGPT to do exactly more closely what you want it to do. So this. So uh. So I know I want to do a more complicated problem, but I'm going to ask ChatGPT to do simple, simple step first. Right. So first. Just give me one or two. I verify this is correct. This is actually, <clears throat> and then expanded the plot to n one two three four. Right. So amazingly, it does very well. The, <clears throat> uh, notice by now, it hasn't shown a single line of Python code. It just generated all the plot. There's no Python code. By now, it's, it's just generated the plot. It's not a single line of Python code, but I see here. The Python code is behind it. Yeah. <clears throat> you do it behind, you just give me the plot. I don't really like this figure. I they see update the color, black and blue. So it does update the color. <clears throat> yeah. And then, uh, Make the figure legend four times larger. Uh, it does do that. <laughs> so, uh, use a boat found in the figure. It does do that as well. Uh, update the title of the figure to AD. Oh, it then says it does. Every now and then it does have this figure. I, I just asked you to update the figure. We had run, run into an error, you just cannot correct it. <clears throat> and then what I do, I just copy paste my Python code, ask it to re, uh, rewrite my own entire code in Python. And then I just rerun another uh, Python code in CodeLab. That's actually how I change it. So it put, I, I guess ideally, if ChatGPT doesn't need to run error, the figure can generate natively ChatGPT. Since it always tell me there's an error, I just cannot correct. So I output that Python code, I run it locally, generate my final figure. Uh, I didn't go back to check why ChatGPT just cannot do it on its own, but I don't care. <laughs> In this case, I, I just need a figure. <clears throat> so, uh, modify the previous code to make the plot read in dash line. Okay, so apparently the previous plot, the previous plot, the line is solid. I want to make it in dash the line. 
Yeah, the final figure is really in the dash of the line. So it looks like uh, I didn't say it, but it doesn't look like the chat GPT generated the final figure in dash. So, but uh, uh, revise about Kurt Buddha figure legend to. Aha, uh -huh. so this is part. I know specifically what I want to do now. So I look at the figure, I realize that figure legend is not in a place looks very athletic. So I say do the figure to a very specific place. So I, I yeah. um, Uh, so, so this part is, I guess, because I know that's where the floating function is, I just probably put exactly there. Uh, <clears throat> it didn't do well, so I should explain how to change that figure legend. Uh, and then do it again. <laughs> so, yeah. so it take, take a few conversations to really make the figure look like the, what I really like. Uh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> and also save it in a publication quality, DPI 300. So that's what the most pub publisher will ask the figure in high resolution, a dot per inch 300. So, yeah. It looks like that's the last part. Yeah. So this is how I generated this uh, figure. And also, yeah, actually more than that. Uh, <coughs> I want to see uh, where did that generate happen? Oh, that's my Python bootcamp. <clears throat> That's what I shared with you. Uh, There's also the simulation. Um, maybe I saved in a different way. Yes. Uh, <clears throat> so here's the, the other part. Push. Yeah, so I put the my reliability block model the, there. That's see the image is just the formula. Yeah. I did put my half paper in that's a case station. <laughs> Cannot understand. <clears throat> but also ask it specifically. Write Python code to similar RNG using P N lambda. I put the lambda in latex because the in the paper it is a Greek letter. So if I tell you the English lambda, I'm not sure whether they understand that that's the same lambda. So I put it in the latex. Uh, uh, <clears throat> so sometimes if you know latex, it's also a bit easier. But, uh, and the MA in the range of that. Uh, so I did give it a very specific uh, uh, instruction to do this. Uh, I kind of wonder if I remove the latex, whether you still can do it or not. <laughs> yeah. But that's what I tell you to do. So it does give me the Python code. I think I can try copy paste that, see whether it works. <coughs> so.
but yeah, it's still repeatable. It's certainly a functional code. It, it's it's not in the biological relevant uh, range, but this is good step just from scratch. So it, this is not a biological relevant because, uh, <laughs> so, but we it's a good start. Uh, it, it, it just as I write the code and run, uh, and then uh, let's see. Uh, oh, then I, I wouldn't show exactly doing the correct call because it doesn't look like reasonable. Uh, it's not biological relevant. I I want to double check and apparently, uh, it's double checked. It's still the same. So I ask for the error. It's actually there's no error. This is the part is correct formula, but it's still the same thing. So it, it says it's correct, but the, the formula is still the same. So then I'm <clears throat> and then I say I wish the value should be in that. That's a biologically relevant range. <laughs> and read of aging in that range. And that those are the biological relevant and then Please find the appropriate range of the parameters. Amazingly, it does all that for me. <laughs> That's how I ask you to do. But those parameters are not in a relevant range, and this is what I want on that. And it does that. Uh, so this is saving a lot of trouble. <laughs> so yeah. Uh, it, if you look at it, actually, basically setting the range. It will do an iteration, go with the parameter. If it's in that range, find it. So it's it's not a hard if you write the code, but it's so easier. Let save my time to do other more complicated. So this makes the uh, the research work is much more faster. So there, and then I I I guess I. That prompt missed the p value. Uh, I didn't saw through. <laughs> so I see it to go with three, three per minute, but I missed another one. So added uh, another one. And then lambda p. Oh, notice I didn't use the latex. Apparently, lambda just works. So I didn't use latex for the lambda. Okay. Uh, also, because in the Python code, you just use lambda. So I guess that's why. It's okay now, but but in the Python code, it's just called lambda. But in the PDF, it's a great symbol. So, so I just modify that. Uh, now redo it with the parameter p also there. So, and that's look like it's my final code. That's how I generate the control plot. So that's the yeah, and then. I tried again with uh, different one, with more, more iteration, I guess. Yeah. The, the point is the, I started just with the PDF and the image. <laughs> so instead of I write the Python code from scratch. And it's, uh, there's actually, you can probably see, I, I've been using this for a very, very long time. There are many instruments of it. Uh, organizing a symposium 